Zach here. Welcome back to the 10th episode of Crack Live. And it's your few minutes for everyone to get to my chats. But while that's happening, I actually just want to talk about my amazing experience on MasterChef Celebrity Showdown, which aired about two days ago. And it was an, I had an amazing time. So basically what the scoop was, it was there was a bunch of celebrity food battles. And at the end of it, I happened to be in it. And it was the juniors inside the current season that I'm in versus the MasterChef champs. So it was an honor to compete against them. It was an amazing experience. I had so much fun doing it. And inside, basically what the challenge was, it was delicious. It was a Gordon Ramsay classic. It's a delicious salmon on croup with some blanched sincere potatoes. It was beautiful, crispy, Brussels sprouts and nuts in them. And then it was a burning sauce. So it was absolutely to die for. But the twist was, it was inside a tag team style. So we'd constantly be switching around, and it was hectic, but it was a lot of fun. And we did, even though the juniors lost, that's all right, because we put out a great dish, and the champs put out an amazing dish, too. I loved you on Good Day Orlando. I just got a question. I loved you on Good Day Orlando. Yeah, I actually did a... Uh, a segment on Good Day Orlando, Fox 35, two, on Monday, <laughs> sorry about that, on a Monday in Orlando. So it was a lot of fun. I'm having, I had so much fun doing it. So you know what? Before I was, when I was getting ready to do the Periscope broadcast, I wasn't really sure what to do because usually I have it kind of planned out a little while before. But then I thought, why don't I do the dish I did on MasterChef Celebrity Showdown? on my own this time, and that was, I thought that was a pretty good idea. And lastly, this Periscope is going to work just a little bit differently. Usually I didn't really have a set time difference, but this time to show you guys, I'm going to be doing almost an exact replica of the dish in one hour. As you can see, I have my little timer back there. But as I, well, like I said, I'm going to do this in one hour. It's hard to find a few of the stuff. I mean, MasterChef has like, can basically get everything they, uh, all the ingredients they want in the world. So it was a little hard for me to find a few things, but this is going to be very, 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 very similar to the dish. And before we start, I just want to do a shout out to everyone on MasterChef. I want, just want to say that Claudia is a super, super nice person, mm -hmm. very amazing cook. And, uh, Luca is a really, really funny guy. He's awesome. And then Christine yeah, is absolutely great. inspirational. I mean, it's just amazing to see her cook. When I got there, I absolutely couldn't believe it. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone at MasterChef, the production team, Wranglers, everyone there was so nice. So, you know what, guys? Let's get start. Um, Questions. Oh, yeah. One last thing, sorry. Since this is going to be a time little challenge for me, I'm going to take questions at the end of the cooking down because I don't want to be over that 60 minutes because it's because it's a little challenge for me you know this is just take a I mean there's a lot of stuff going on I mean I have my beautiful array of ingredients and I have a lot of equipment to do so I'd be more than happy to take questions at the end of the demo maybe if you guys have a challenge at the end of it I could do that too but for now, I'm just going to kind of walk you through the whole recipe inside of 60 minutes. I'm talking to you, giving tips, tricks, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. What did you do on the showdown? Oh, yeah. On the showdown. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, actually have something. I got a little insider info for, for this. So after the showdown uh after we filmed it, I actually kind of wrote down everything I did. And basically there was, I think, six intervals, three 10 minutes, and then, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was three 10 minute intervals, and then four, I think, five minute ones. So, or five, you know, three or four or five minute, I don't know the exact ones. But basically what happened is that I went first, then it was Addison, then me, Amaya, me, and then Amaya, and then Addison played it. So I can kind of tell you guys everything I did. So basically for the on crew, I sliced the salmon. Oh, the, oh yeah, I went first. 
And what I did until the first 10 minutes was you have to do, I have to, I have to get some of the on crude done and just a bunch of the mise en place prep because I'm really fast with that. So I sliced the salmon in half. I blanched the asparagus for the en croute. Um, I made the pesto butter, which means you have to take basil, thyme, salt, pepper, lemon, and kind of and butter, obviously, and just kind of blend that around until it's nice and smooth. I cut and started to boil the potatoes. Um, I think, yeah, and then I also got the reduction going on for the Bernays. And basically, the difference between a hollandaise and a Bernays sauce is that the Bernays you actually make a tarragon shallot and champagne vinegar reduction, and then you add that to your eggs and you whisk that on the stove. Rather than a hollandaise, it's just the plain egg yolk with lemon juice. So I actually got the reduction going. And then I'm not, Addison went next, and then after that, what I did was I cracked for the Brussels sprouts. Um, basically, it's these delicious crispy Brussels sprouts with some amazing walnuts to it. So what I did was I slit, like cut the ends off the Brussels sprouts, I peeled them off, I blanched them, shocked them in an ice bath, and then they also had two different kinds of nuts. I can only get access to one, but I couldn't even get them inside a shell. So for the 30 seconds that I'm doing that, what I'll do is I'll juggle something for you guys. All right, so for the Brussels sprouts, what I did was I peeled them, I blanched them, I shocked them, I cut the pancetta, um, I strained the hollandaise, and then I just did like a lot of the prep work, I think. And then after I went again near the end, um, let me see, sorry guys, one second. Yeah, I strained the reduction, I and then I actually made the hollandaise. Yeah, yeah I made the hollandaise. And then um, I finished the hollandaise. So I did a, a lot for the amount that I was on. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys that little bit of an insider info. A question from you now, Alex. Zach, did you ever want to jump in and just take over in the challenge when you saw them struggling? I just got a question from you now from Alex. Did you ever did you ever feel like you just wanted to jump in and help when they were struggling? Or sorry, take it over when they were struggling? I mean, of course I did because with Addison, how she burnt herself and then the salmon got cooked upside down, sorry, seam side up. You're supposed to cook it seam side down. Um, you know, Amaya was struggling a lot of time when she first came in. She was having trouble just kind of getting into it. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of just wanted to, like, jump in and be like, here, let, here, let me help you. We take over. But, you know, it was a tag team challenge. So this is kind of my opportunity to show you guys the whole dish by myself into the 60-minute time frame. And hopefully, I can get that done in time. All right. So I'm just going to put this aside. And we're actually going to be getting our little timer started. All right, guys, three, two, one, and the one hour starts now. All right, so first thing we're going to be doing is slicing the salmon. Okay, so I'm going to get a glove on, and then now this is for the on -crew. So the first thing you want to be doing is slicing the salmon, and then we're going to be getting the pesto butter done. And hopefully we can get the reduction going, too, inside the same 10-minute time frame. So here I have my knife. Just kind of angle it right on half and make sure it's a nice, even, clean cut. A sec. Just there we go. All right, so that's sliced up. Look at that. That's, like, a beautiful, nicely sliced filet. All right, so that's done. I'm going to put my whoops, knife away, and then I'm going to put that back on my plate and set that aside. All right, next thing is the pesto butter. So here I have my little array of beautiful ingredients. I'm going to grab my basil, some fresh dill, my uh, lemon, butter, and then I have my fresh salt and pepper. All right, so for the basil, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly chop this up because it helps blend it a little easier. So just roll that up into a bunch and just ship it on that, which means you're basically cutting it into ribbons. Now, the best way to do that for any herbs or something else, let's say you're cutting uh, rainbow chard, is to bunch it up into a really nice bunch, and then you would cut. All right, so I'm going to grab, here I have my softened butter. Just going to kind of, <coughs> sorry, just going to kind of melt that up. And then... Put that right into here. OK, 
Okay, so now that's just the butter. So what I'm going to do, put some uh, the dill in there. And then just to kind of soften that up before the first blend, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add my lemon juice right in. There we go. That should be good. Okay, so now using my hand blender, I'm just going to blend that up. Now this is a little tricky because it gets stuck in a may not be fully combined, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be see, it's get really sticky like that, but that's okay. Alright, so I'm gonna grab a spoon and just get that out. Get all that out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my basil right in. See it kind of just like softened up the butter for when the basil comes in, it'll be a little easier to work with. Alright, basil going in. And you know what? I'm gonna add oh, just a little bit more. So Got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of, not a lot of room. <laughs> Just there we go. Alright, so I'm gonna add my little bit more butter in. Being really messy, but that's okay. And just blend that. What kind of blender is that? Uh, this is just your regular hand blender. You could use a food processor or a regular blender. Anything you have at home. <laughs> See, it's already turning this really nice bright color, so I'm going to scrape that off of the sides. And that is just about done. There we go. This is looking really good. So now for the last bit, I'm not going to blend it again because it's going to really make sense. And now, when you're making the pesto butter, there's two ways to do it. One, with the electric machine. Or what you can do is take, is soften up the butter really nice and just kind of work that around with your spatula. So that's what I'm going to do for the last part of this. There we go. That's just about done. Done. All right. So I'm going to take this basil, use that later for something else. And remember, you always want to keep a nice, clean cutting board. All right. So now that we've got most of the salmon ready, I'm going to do that inside the next 10-minute interval. And what you want to do now is uh, make the reduction. So for the reduction for the Bernays sauce, because this needs to reduce and stuff and get that really nice. So you have my beautiful fresh tarragon. I'm going to grab two shallots and champagne vinegar. Can you tell me about the blender at Costco? And I got the hand blender at Costco or Walmart or something. No, Costco. No, Costco. Yeah, I got a cheap one. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my little pot here. $19 for the blender. I think it's $20 for the blender. That's right. All right, so I have my tarragon, and I'm going to take my shallot, cut the end off, other end off, and then slice that in half. And then, usual for any kind of onion, peel it. Now, you could use a regular onion, but I find that the shallot just brings this beautiful, kind of rich, uh, fresh flavor to it, and it's going to be really, really delicious. All right, so I've been doing this for about five minutes, looking good so far. After I get the reduction going... I'm looking really good. Uh, speaking of which, you know what? I'm gonna do this one sec. I'm gonna get my potatoes in the water. So I have my, so I have some hot water already. I just crank the heat up. And now for these guys, all you wanna do, this is really simple, cut the potatoes in half. I'm gonna do a little extra, cause better be safe than sorry. And just like I said, cut them in half and then dump them inside your boiling salted water. Alright, you don't need to come here, I'm just gonna do that. One foul, but that's okay. Get them right in. All right, that's done. Now back to our reduction. Okay, so I'm going to cut the other shallot in half. Got about doing really good so far. Just peel that up. And like I said, I'll be taking the questions at the end of this, just so that way I can answer, but I'll be guiding you through the whole dish. Okay, so I'm going to slice that just like an onion, go across, and then just chop that up. That's one, use that later. Any kind of little scraps you see, I'm gonna be all setting them aside for later. All right, so again, just kind of slice that up really nice and quick. It needs about one more big one. So I'm gonna put that inside a little bowl I have there. And last time, across. And there we go. 
All right, these are good to go. Periscope and Google posting on YouTube. Someone asked a question. Maybe just ask All right. Okay, so in my little pot, in goes the shallots. So just take a quick peek at that. You know, I'm gonna add a little bit more because I'm gonna be doing it with three egg yolks. And then to add to that, you can put in your tarragon. Just dump that in. You know, what? I'll just chop that up. In goes the tarragon, and then champagne vinegar. Boom. Now that's just gotta reduce. To a ninja. Just got a statement. Someone called me a ninja. That's a big one. I probably put just a little bit too much, but that's all right because it'll reduce and I'll be good. All right, so put that on high, medium heat, let that reduce. But since it's a small burner, I'm gonna okay. Handles. Keep your handles off to the side. Okay. So that's done, and then I'm gonna set that aside and get ready for the uh, on croup. Yes, gotta get that done. So I'm just gonna put this right here for later. And then here I have a defrosted puff pastry that now for this, usually you'll get it inside one sheet. You want to get the puff pastry sheets, not cups. And basically what I did is I just floured my board till it's ready to go. And then using your rolling pin, you have to roll it out because you don't. All right, so I'm just going to roll that out till it's a little thinner. And then, oops, making a mess. <laughs> Flip that over once and just... Roll it out this way. Now you don't want to be too thin. You just sorry, you don't want it to be too thin because then it's gonna break. So you want it just a good size, not too thick, because then it won't because it won't cook, but not too thin because then it'll rip. All right. So grabbing my little flour. Boom. There we go. And potatoes are in the water. Uh, rolling out this. This is looking really really good. All right. So I'm just gonna just do that just a little bit more. And then after I get this, so basically now what you want to do is, so, whoa, all right, slow down. I'm going to grab my egg from my egg wash and just crack it. And then I have my fork and just whisk that up. Whoops, one sec. Ugh, okay. I think I have a little bit of shallot in there, but that's okay. I'll add a nice little flavor. Alright, boom, there we go. Egg wash done. Okay, so now for the salmon, we're actually going to start assembling the salmon. So what I'm going to be doing is putting that right there. Man, I lost some going on. That's alright. Okay, so I'm going to add, put my gloves on because I don't want to spend too much time washing my hands. There we go. Okay, so now for the salmon. The reason why I filleted it in half is because there's going to be two layers. One is going to be the pesto butter, and then the other one is going to be uh, some Dijon mustard. Now, you could use whole grain, anything you like. I prefer a nice smooth, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So take your filleted salmon, and then here I have two brushes. We'll actually have like five off to the side, and then just grab that and just brush it on right there. Beautiful. Okay. So now you just want to do that till it's nicely covered. And then that's good to go. Just going to add a little bit more. Boom. All right. That's, that should be good. And then now I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm not going to use a brush for the pesto butter. That will be for the egg. Because I don't want to kind of, because it's a little thick. I'll be honest. It's a little thick, but that's all right. But that's how you want to meet. It's a pesto butter, butter thick. Okay, so I have my slotted edge spatula, and what you want to do is just, oh, should have kept the glove on. <laughs> Alright, don't worry, I'll get another one on. I have plenty off to the side. One sec, guys, sorry about that. I just got a statement, will you cook it upside down like Addison? Ha, ha, ha. Um, no, I won't. I, I won't. I won't be cooking it upside down. I'll be getting extra time. Okay. So like I said, just gonna kinda make carefully spread that on till it's nice and even. Gonna grab a little bit more and just kinda even that out. Almost ready to go. Now what this is gonna do is gonna add a beautiful flavor. This is gonna be 
the key in the center piece of the concrete. This is right in the center. Once you cut it open, all these juices are going to come out. It's going to smell amazing. And this is going to add an amount of flavor that you will not believe. So you guys definitely got to try making this at home. You know, it's actually not that hard to do, but it is hard inside the hour with all the other elements, but that's right. Okay, so salmon goes right there. And now what I'm going to do is keep one glove on this time. And sorry, just going to set that aside. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pastry sheet and put the salmon right on. Now you want to put that right inside the middle. Boom, look at that. Take my glove off because I won't be needing it. And it's going to kind of clear out my station here. Don't need that. We'll need that. All right, so now what you want to do is grab your pepper, fresh ground pepper, and just season the outside. Some salt, perfect seasoning. Always want to make sure that you season each layer of your dish. And then here we have our little egg wash. Now I just egg wash the whole thing around the sides. Almost ready to go. Just needs a little bit more. You want to make sure that you don't like flood it with egg wash, obviously, but then it has to be enough just to stick. And you want to cover each little area. All right. Now I can actually smell that really pungent reduction with the vinegar. I mean, it smells amazing in here. All right. I'm going to be needing that in just a sec. All right. So now you want to do is take the one flap and I want to make sure that it's really nice and tight. Go over like that. That's perfect. And then once again, go on the other side. Just going to make sure that's tight. And there we go. Now you want to make like a little indent just to kind of see where that is. And then you're going to take a little paring knife here and then just cut it off so because you're just going to trim it. Now, this kind of seems complicated. And the first time you do it, when I did it, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And it felt complicated, but it actually isn't. Okay, so now egg wash one side, egg wash the other oh, side. Oh, you missed the asparagus. Oh, my God. I missed the asparagus. You know what? That's okay. There wasn't that much to do anyway. What do you do with the asparagus? Can you just explain? Uh, so for the asparagus, what you do is you take it, you blanch it, trim it, and then you put that on the bottom, and then the salmon goes on top. Oh, sorry about that, guys, but it doesn't make too big of a difference. Don't worry. Just the on crew itself is to that point. Okay. That's good to go. And then, oh, I moved my tablet over. Sorry, guys. One second. I'm out of shot. And then now I have my uh, surround drop off to the side, so I'm just going to quickly surround that for you guys. Okay, so surround wrap, just make sure it's super tight. All right, now here's the, yep, potatoes are going good. Okay, now here's the key, um, could you just yep. show that? You want to take it, and let me put my towel down for a sec. You want to take it and kind of just like roll up the sides, because the more tighter it is, the more even it will be, uh, the more even the shape will be. So like I said, just tighten that up really good. Then stick that in the fridge for a few minutes. Okay, right, so that's done. Cutting board's done. I'm gonna sit that aside. Put that aside here. And then we're gonna be back with our other cutting board. Alright guys, so the next thing you wanna be doing is getting the Brussels ready. Because what you're gonna need, need to do is you're gonna cut the ends off, peel them, blanch them, shock them in ice bath, and then do that. Okay, so here I have my beautiful Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Somebody said they're not a fan of asparagus. I just got a statement. Not Someone said, not a fan of asparagus. I didn't, sometimes I hate asparagus, sometimes I don't like it. It depends on how I'm feeling or the way it's cooked. I hate it when they're like all mushy and stuff, but that's all right. All right, so blanching it. So just, I have a trick for you guys. So you take the end off and start to peel it. You're not going to need too much. Then when it comes to a point where you can't peel it again, just take another end off and then continue to peel. Now, this is probably the most time-consuming thing of all because, I mean, who wants to sit here and peel Brussels sprouts, right? Do you like onions? I just got a state a question. Do you like onions? Um, you have a nice haircut, yes. Zach. 
statement. You have a nice record to that. Uh, you should be thanking my mom for that. Oh, Alex wrote, uh, Alex said, um, it's not complicated if Zach is doing the cooking. <laughs> oh, I just got a statement from you now from Alex. It's not complicated if Zach is doing the cooking. Well, it actually still can be complicated. I mean, I'm not perfect. I mean, I still struggle. You guys won't believe how many times I've done some fails inside the kitchen. One time I tried to make pretzels. They turned into breadsticks. They still tasted good, but not what I wanted. Anyway, all right. So we're just going to be peeling these off. This is probably the most boring part of the whole thing, but that's okay. Okay. So we'll just cut it on the end. Talk about what you were doing in the show. It was a live show. Oh, yeah, it actually was a live show. There was the audience. It wasn't, like, live broadcast to, to TV, but there was a big audience there, like 200 people, maybe, or plus, I think. All right, so let's take a quick look at our reduction. All right, the potatoes are good, and you want to cook those till they're still firm because you want them to be too mushy when we sear them. See, that's going good. That needs to reduce a little bit more till it's a straining point, and then you just get this beautiful bright red. Okay, so continue to peel these uh, Brussels sprouts. All right, so I'm at, I got, I'm doing, I've been doing this for about 28 minutes. So, so far, so good. I've been, the salmon's already in the, in the oven. The reduction's going. Um, everything's looking pretty darn good so far. All right. Somebody so, said, soon you'll get pe people to prepare your sprouts for you. Just got to say, and so, soon you will be able to get people to peel your sprouts for you. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I, even though these are a pain in the butt, I enjoy it because it's cooking. So. Okay, so take that off and just, I'm going to do, just do these last ones because you don't need too much because it's only going to be like one plate. But then if you were making a larger portion, I'll just leave it more. What kind of shoes do you like? Got a question. What kind of shoes do you like? Huh. I don't know. It depends. There's not really one brand that I'll fall back to that I like even though just look cool because uh just because like the brand or whatever but i but i don't know i just like nike i like uh wilson for tennis shoes but mostly nike a 24 year old girl on periscope says she's rooting for you you cook awesome i just got a statement a 24 year old that's very specific girl is rooting for me on periscope um i want ashley wanted to say thanks so much for all you guys support i would not have been able to done this without all right, that's done. Enough of the talking. We're back to this. All right. So these are going. That is almost done. I have to keep my eye on that. So I'm going to turn the temp down. I have my boiling salted water. And now you only want to, you want to be staying at the stove for this because these are going to cook instantly. Now you don't want to, you want to make sure that you overcook them because then they're going to be really mushy. And look, in the magic of time, I already have a nice battery to do Okay, so setting that aside and just grab your spider. That's what this is. That's what this is called. And just move that around. Whoa! <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys know if you are cooking this, stay away from this because it's really punchy. Okay, so that's cooking up. Blanch these for about a minute and shock them into the ice bath and then kind of let it do its thing. Somebody said, How do you start cooking? I just got a question. How do you start cooking? Well, the big thing is, just get into the kitchen. Whether it's a fail, you know, at the start, I was probably cutting onions, like, that big, and I did it wrong, and then my mom was trying to teach me at the start, and she's like, I think you cut the onion wrong, or used the wrong knife, and I was like, sorry. So just like I said, just get into the kitchen. I failed a lot at start. Okay, so just get those right in. Are those cephalon pots? Uh, cephalon? Um, I have no clue, to be honest. Zero clue. Okay, so do not do this at home, but I'm just doing it because I'm in a rush. And then just leave those puppies in the ice bath. I'm going to try to get a little bit warm. Okay, that'll have to do, and then I'll get the rest of them in a sec. So just leave that in there just to chill. If you leave it with the ice, it's going to be really kind of people out. Okay, so the reduction, see all that? It's reduced fully. That's done. The good thing I kept my eye on it. Because the first time it reduced a little too much. Somebody sent you a picture of a baby. Say thank you. Someone sent me a picture of a baby. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna blend those and I'm just gonna get these last ones out. And the reason why I'm leaving the spider in there because if you just dump them in, they're gonna get all mixed in with ice cubes. It'll be really hard to kind of pick out. Boom. 
Now looking done. Looking good. Now I'm going to save this pot on low heat for when I do the burning sauce because you have to have a double boiler going. All right, let's head on back here. Oops, sorry. I'm getting confused with wires. All right, so I'm just going to quickly check these guys. All right, those are done. Done, 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 done. Okay, so take these out and put them in my little bowl. Say hi to somebody's niece. Hi to somebody's niece. <laughs> I don't really know. Okay, so taking the potatoes out and boom, put them in the bowl. Now these are uh, half cooked, and the reason why they're half cooked is because I'm gonna be searing these in butter to get a really nice kind of cook on them, and it's gonna be delicious. All right, so next thing, next thing, next thing. Sorry about that, my arm was in the camera. Um, all right, next thing. So these are pecans, or no, these are walnuts. Give a uh, shout out to, to Giselle. Shout out to, to Giselle. Okay, so now these are walnuts, and on the show I have two different kinds of nuts, and you have to crack them. So I'm just gonna wait around for 30 seconds, or a minute, so. Uh, I'll go to the timer. Tomorrow, is that sweet potato? Uh, no, it's just a regular Coolio potato. Now you guys can ask questions for about the 50 seconds we have left. While I'm waiting for, while mm -hmm. my, uh, walnuts or nuts are cracking. Oh yeah, I can actually juggle for you guys. My Brussels sprouts. Want to do some? I'm gonna see if I can do four. What's it like being on TV and having people treat you differently? Well, oh, never fail. What's it like being on TV and people treating you differently? Um, being on TV is absolutely amazing, but everyone is actually really, really nice before I went on the show. And now, so I'm just gonna keep it there. All right, I have five, four, three, two. Oh, how'd you get exposed one. to all those vegetables? I've right. never eaten most of the vegetables you cook. How'd you get exposed to all these vegetables? I actually just went to my local supermarket. You know, I always try to use fresh ingredients when you cook. Loads of fresh herbs, so be sure to do that. Kate oh, says hi. Kate says hi. Well, hey, Kate. Kate says hi. So Kate was one of my buddies on the show. All right, so just gonna roughly chop that. You don't wanna do this too much because then you'll have a powdery. Just kinda roughly chop it. Okay, so in the bowl it goes for our, our boom. Been recognized on the street yet? Yeah. Um, I got, I just got a question. Do you get recognized on the street? Um, I've actually only gotten recognized once inside a supermarket. And like the person was like, hi, I know you. And then I'm like, from TV? And I'm like, oh yeah. So that was really, really funny. So that was the first person that, that noticed me. All right, so I'm just cleaning my cutting board. Okay, so our nuts are chopped, um, potatoes are done. Uh, okay, so for the Brussels, now what we're gonna do, get that side in. We're actually just, let's kind of go here, we're gonna start doing our pans. Oh my God, I almost forgot my salmon. Okay, that was a close one. All right, so before we do any of that, not important thing right now, I'm gonna get some stuff out of the oven. Okay, so untie that. Do you sharpen your knife before use? I just got a question. Do you sharpen your knife before use? Yes, actually, you sharpening stuff. Okay, so seen that way. Sure, good to go. Oops, please be careful with that. Okay, now, now you want to make sure you get a nice golden brown top. So here we have our egg wash. Now just egg wash the side, but don't overcrowd it with the egg wash. Just enough to make it nice and golden brown. Beautiful, look at that. On the side, there we go. And just a little bit more on the corner and, all right, now, for that nice finishy look, give me one second. I actually forgot my finishing salt. If it's in here, and it's not. It's over there, it's over there. Oh my God, give me one second, I'm sorry. On the left, up third row. Got it, all right. So now, what's this gonna do when it comes out of the oven, it's gonna give this really nice kind of crusty look to it, and it's gonna be beautiful. So just salt on top. Now this is uh, finishing salt. That's basically a coarse salt, more coarse for see. Take a look at that. All right, now into the oven. Not gonna spend too much time on that. Into oven it goes 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes max. Wellington in. And now please remember, this is gonna take about a little while to rest, okay? 
Alright, uh, so I'm gonna set that for 15 minutes. Whenever you're cooking something, always uh, set the timer for underneath because if you set it for over and it's burnt, it's very to do it under. Somebody okay. asked you if you'll post this on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, someone asked me if this will be on YouTube. Yes, I'll be posting this on my YouTube channel. Just type in Zach Cara tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right, so we're going to head on over there and start heating our pans. Let's do this. All right, so pan for the potatoes. Now, on the show, the way we did it is you have to put a lot of butter in the pan, like a lot. So medium uh, high heat because you obviously want to get a nice seat to it. And then for the other one, we're going to do that on, uh, you know what, I'm going to swap you guys. The other one is a little bigger one. All right, medium high heat. And then what you want to do, add a lot of butter. Sorry guys, give me one sec, just grabbing my butter. You get nervous in the kitchen in MasterChef? Just got a question, do you get nervous in the kitchen and in MasterChef? Uh, I thought I would be nervous. At Somebody said they like your shoes too. Yeah, your shoes. My <laughs> shoes. I keep these away because I don't want to walk around with shoes. All right. Anyway, butter in like a lot of butter. More than I know it's gonna look like a lot, but that's how we did it. So I'm gonna try to replicate that as much as possible. That's for the potatoes. For the Brussels, you obviously don't want to put as much uh, butter in. And now while that's going, we're gonna be straining our reduction. So here I have my reduction. Gonna grab a strainer. Just so we make sure that's done. Okay, so strainer, grab a spatula. This is very, very important. You have to use a spatula because what it's gonna do, it's gonna suppress all that stuff up. There we go. I'm gonna kinda move that over. There we go. Okay, now kinda work that, and just kinda see already some juices are falling off. Work that. Put it around the side. Make sure you get all of that good stuff in. It's just about done. There we go. That's perfect. One sec. So a little bit of liquid in there. That's good to go. That's done. 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 All right. One sec. Okay. So now we have our liquid for our sauce. Could be a little bit more, but that's our right. Okay, so butter, we have a lot of butter in the pan, like a lot. Okay, so that's melting up. Potatoes go in, flat side down, so we try to get a good sear on them. And now into the pan is gonna go my uh, thyme, probably enough. So we're gonna add our two spring of thyme. Just put that right in. Please be careful, it's gonna splatter because the high water content. Oh, that's buttery, awesome. Okay, so that's melted up. Now, Brussels go in. Brussels sauce, right in the pan. Get that across, and now you want to add the nuts after these start to get really crispy. Okay, so now, so now for the potatoes, you do not want to cook them too much. You want to make sure you get them really golden brown. These are going to be cooking for about 5 to 10 minutes. A nice high heat, golden brown temperature. You, you could baste them a little bit. And then we're going to put those aside. Okay, so like I said, Brussels. Oh, I'm making a mess up. Okay. And you want to let these get crispy. A little higher heat. Get them crispy. Add the chopped nuts in. Some salt and pepper. And we're actually almost done. All we have, these, these are going to take about... Brussels will be done in five. Uh, this will, oh, my timer's off. One sec, guys. Come on. All right, it's still going, don't worry. It didn't pause or anything. Okay, so for the potatoes, salt, pepper on them. Same here. And then here I have my regular salt. Make sure that's all good to go. And we're actually going to just head on over there and get our eggs ready for our burning sauce. Alright, now on the show, and I completely regret doing this, I started the burning sauce. And for some, reason, for some really, 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 really weird reason, I only did one egg yolk, which is not going to be nearly enough, but that's alright. I'm going to change that now. Okay, so I'm going to keep the egg white, maybe do a meringue or something later. 
So, half egg. Boom. Oh, I should use gloves. That's okay. I'll just go rinse out my hands. Boom. Separate the yolk. Whoa. I am rushing and I'm not being careful. Okay. First egg yolk. Second. Somebody asked, do you have to heat up the pan before adding the butter to sear? Uh, don't you have to heat up the pan before adding to butter to sear? Um, that actually doesn't really matter. So the pan for butter, because it has to melt, it doesn't really matter. But you have to get the butter hot before you add the in, which is exactly what I did. There we go. And, all right. This is the last egg yolk. And that should be good. Now, please excuse me. I was being an idiot and I forgot to wear gloves. All right, let's come back over to our stove and our brussels are going to... Oh, what happened here? Move it. All right, so... Oh, look at that. Uh, these actually need to stir up a little... Oh, fine. A little bit more. So I'm going to let these guys be. And then... The brush is starting to get brown. So now what you're going to do, add your chopped nuts in. You don't want to add all of them. I probably could have done a little bit more Brussels sprouts, but that's all right. And our Wellington might be done in about eight minutes. So we're actually looking really, really good. Okay, I'm going to give that a talk. And I know you can put dirt safe next to you now to go with all the laundry you've been making. I just got a statement. You should cook a dessert dish to with all the beautiful entrees you can make. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will do a dessert dish. I really... Oh, yeah. You guys can check out uh, my blog. And I haven't been posting my previous broadcast one, but I'm going to get those up. But on my blog right now, I have gluten-free chocolate cupcakes for those of you that do not eat wheat. And they are absolutely to die for. And the reason why I do that is because for a little while, I was gluten-free due to tummy problems. But that's, you don't need to talk about that. And when I made these and I tasted them, I could not believe that they are gluten-free. So they are absolutely delicious. Okay, so I'm just going to let these crisp up. Just How do you look up your blog? Sorry? How do you look up for your blog? Uh, For my blog, oh, one sec. Can you just give me one sec, guys? Potatoes are done. Look at these. Keep on, you gotta go through my website, zackdashcar.com, and take a look at the top bar, and I'll link to the blog right there. Okay, so, once I forgot to get it set wrong, and before I do that, you can stir. Okay, so, potatoes. Now you wanna rest them, make sure that they're up like that, so that they don't get soggy. And, man, it smells of butter in here, really. But that's all right. I mean, it smells good. Okay, so the pan's going to cool right there. Off. And we have 25 minutes left. Our salmon is done in like six minutes. And our Brussels and our potatoes are done. So all I really have to do is make the Bernay sauce, which literally takes about three minutes. I actually think I'm going to finish pretty early. All right, so these are done. Boom. Look at that. I'm pretty quick, huh? Let's send them back over here, and we're gonna finish up the rest of our stuff. Okay, so we move this to the side, and our blusters are good to go. Uh, we have our three egg yolks. For the egg yolks, I'll just set up a bit before we get them inside there. Oh, you know what? I'm actually just going to wait before I do the the Bernays sauce. I didn't think I'd get all that done so early because I want to keep an eye on the salmon and the salmon wellington has to rest and I don't want this to get all seized up and have like the skin on top of it. So I'm actually just going to wait till the wellington is done, which will be in about six minutes. So that'll leave me at around 17 minutes left. Bernays sauce will be three, mi three or four minutes extra plating. Uh, about another minute, so I should be done at around 13 to 14 to 15 minutes. And you know, when I was inside the master's kitchen, I was always mapping out what I do first. Like, 
the trick I had was for an hour time frame, cook the protein at 30 minutes because you had because then it has enough time to rest if you're doing a steak. So that's a little trick for you guys. And then, you know what? I always made sure that I knew what I was doing. I had it all mapped out from the beginning, what I was going to do first, last, and regarding the time frame. So if anyone's going to audition for MasterChef Junior or MasterChef, keep that in mind. Okay, so these are kind of ready to go. Like I said, that's done in 4, four minutes, 37 seconds. And I'm actually just waiting around. And you guys can fire the stream of questions. If you could open a restaurant, what kind of restaurant would it be? Got a question. If you could open a restaurant, what kind of restaurant would it be? The restaurant I want to name it actually GOAT, and it's going to stand for greatest of all time. I thought that one was pretty funny. But, you know, the restaurant I want it to be like my cooking style. And my cooking style is very open. I don't have a certain thing I fall back to, and I say this a lot, but I'm kind of like a global cuisine, kind of like a modern, global cuisine. So that's kind of my style of cooking. I can do Mexican, Italian, English, uh, a- anything really. So, How did you audition for MasterChef? Got a question. How did you audition for MasterChef? I actually flew into Phoenix when the open call was there, and I had a really great time doing that. And at the, and at the time, I didn't really think, like, I get him because there was, like, four to five to six hundred kids there. And then I was just sitting there, and I'm like, really? How am I supposed to even, like, stand out? How am I supposed to pick? So if you guys are auditioning for MasterChef or Master of Junior, when you go there or when to open call, be yourself. You have to stand out. Make sure that you have an amazing personality, and you really just show off your, your cooking skills there. And that's really about it. Just believe in yourself, have great energy, good personality, and like I said, show off your cooking skills, show them what you can do. Who's your best friend in MasterChef? Got a question. Who's my best friend from MasterChef? Oh, um, I don't know. Um, definitely Corey was. Corey and Cade and JJ and Sam were definitely my bestest friends there, but I mean, we were all friends there, so. How long was the flight to LA? Why don't you say what happened that day? How, oh, this is actually very, very funny. I have an amazing story to tell. So, when I was flying up to LA, uh, during, not for the showdown, but for the actual season of MasterChef, um, we actually missed our flight. So, I, at the time, I was panicking, cause, like, I was just like, whoa, because we, stood up in the wrong line, and then we missed a bad check-in by about 30 seconds to two minutes, I think. It was, it was like literally seconds, and they wouldn't even take a second. So we had to wait around the airport for eight hours while I was literally panicking and stressed out about everything because, like, I missed my flight to go to MasterChef Junior in L.A. Yeah, that doesn't sound so good, but that's okay. So that was really funny. And then at the time, I was like, oh, my God, I'm stressing. But then now that I look back at it, that's pretty funny. I must say so. That's pretty funny. All right, Wellington's done. One minute, 30 seconds. And okay. we have 19 minutes left. So I'll take a few more questions, and we're going to head on back to that. Did it hurt when you burnt yourself on MasterChef? Just got a question. Did it hurt when you burnt yourself on MasterChef Junior? Hell, yeah, it hurt. I mean, I usually, I mean, a cut, like cut like it's okay i mean it hurts but then i get over it It hurts for a few days but then that burn i mean i get like little oil burns but i do it doesn't even matter. talk about the episode how you had two lobsters oh yeah I, oh yeah i actually forgot to tell you guys this inside the show i was actually going to make a beautiful lobster ravioli i already had the lobster chopped up tossed with herbs lemon salt pepper and i was doing my pasta inside the food processor which I don't know why I did it, because you're never supposed to do it inside a machine, but I was trying to save time. But you're supposed to do it by hand. It's a nice, gentle way. And it screwed up my pasta. Uh, my pasta dough. So with 15 minutes left, I have no lobster tail done. So I had to go grab another lobster tail, put it in the water, and then I still literally basted it with herbs, lemon, and butter, and then I put that on the plate. And about the burn, yes, that hurt like heck. Because I had taken my potato fondant out of the oven, and I, don't, I had like... 80 million things going on. So uh, basically what happened was I ran out, I needed a burner to cook my, I don't remember on, and I grabbed the handle as it just came out of the oven, and then it literally burned me from there to there. Oh yeah, so that's it. We're gonna take a look at our uh, Wellington. 
look at that. Mm, that is really good. Okay, one second. Boom. That's actually still feels a little soft. Put that in for another four minutes. Oh, one second. Who's your favorite judge for Master Chef? Just got a question. Who's your favorite judge for Master Chef? My favorite judge would definitely be Gordon, but then all the other judges are super, super, super nice. So How was it cooking in Gordon Ramsay's yard? Got a question. How was it cooking in Gordon Ramsay's yard? It was amazing. Um, I had a really amazing time doing it with the team. And, you know, cooking the three Michelin star dishes was just like, whoa, like, really? But then it turned out to be a lot of fun. Who's the hardest judge, like, on food taste? Just got a question. Who's, like, who's the hardest judge on food taste? Um, Graham's actually pretty picky, I must say. But he's an amazing chef. Um, I don't know. I mean, they all have such high standards, so it was kind of tricky. I don't really know. How tall are you? How many inches have you grown since the show? The question, how tall are you and how many inches have you grown? About I've grown about six inches from the show. Right now I'm like five, six or seven, I think. So I've grown a lot uh, since the show aired, uh, since we filmed, which was like a while back. So yeah, I've grown about five, six, seven, no, like five or six inches. Like I've grown a lot lately. What's your comfort food? My favorite comfort food. Huh. That would definitely have to be a burger or some pasta. Wait, I actually have one thing. Should I just start the burger maze now? Probably, yeah. You know what I'm going to say now? All right, so here I have, this is a cool trick. You guys, come on over here. Okay, so this is, I blanched the Brussels sprouts in. Right there. And the water's still hot, so it's perfect for a little Bernays sauce. Turn that on low heat. And then, oh, where's my bowl? All right there. Oh, you know what? It's going to be done in two seconds. Two minutes, literally. What do you want? But then I'll be short on time. You know what? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because I don't, because you have to like keep your eye on that and constantly be stirring on it. So I don't want it to curdle and be thick. Because the one on the show, I had it, um, what happened based, um, it kind of got a little thicker than it should. So I want to make sure that I keep my eye on this one. What will you do with $100,000 when you win? Got a question. What will you do with $100,000 when you win it? Oh. Someone asked me if they can guess. Yeah, sure. You do yeah. it. Guess you do what? It. Do I have to do it? I don't know how I to do you it. You have to do it. How do you well, know? I just say you don't know how to guess. Uh, somebody was if you want to guess them. I don't know like how to guess. Put your face on. Um, on you now. Just ask, say, how do you, how do you do that? Um, I'll ask. I'll, I'll do that, that right now. One second. Sorry about that. Okay. So what do you left on the one? Can I stick another peek at that, babe? Thanks, <laughs> Let's take a look. All right, that's done. It's good. Good to go. Good to go. Good to go. All right. So look at that. I mean, that's pretty near perfect. Oh, getting hot. Hot, hot, hot. That oven. I love it. Because our oven mitts are full. All right. All right, now burning sauce. We're back into action. Okay, burning sauce. I'm going to click the smiling camera on the screen. Um, guys, if we can do that in... Yeah, we'll do that at the end. Yeah, we'll do that at the end. So... So for the burning sauce, low heat, uh, add our eggs in. Make sure you get all of that. Just tell everybody no questions until we finish. Yeah, and I, I'm going to try to keep low on the questions. I'll do that at the end because this is kind of like the last kind of little bit. Okay, now, oh, shouldn't have put pepper. Whatever, that's fine. Don't put the pepper unless you're using white pepper because it will add like that kind of dark bit, darkness to it. Okay, let me juice it. Okay, now, reduction. I have our reduction liquid. Do not put the pepper in. That was a bad mistake on me. And just whisk that. Okay, now before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my butter all ready to go. Right here. It's softening. Yep, it's good to go. All right, now this is the part where I'm going to literally have to stay there and just kind of do my thing. That's how I'm back there. 
All right, guys, we have 13 minutes left on the clock. Okay, Fournay sauce. Now, always get an oven mitt. I learned this the hard way, even though it's pretty obvious. I mean, you put a metal thing on uh, hot water, I mean, it's always going to get hot. Okay, so now this, you have basically have to stand here for a few minutes because you won't think it's going to get hot because it's going to thicken kind of slowly. So make sure that you keep there and you have to be there. No matter how long it takes, just keep your eyes on it. So just constantly be stirring that. It might take a little while to, to thicken, but once it thickens, it's going to happen in a blink of an eye. All right. Okay, so now what you want to do is just cook this till it's kind of ribbony, and then you add the butter. Just whisking that, whisking that, make your twist. Is that really No. So just tell the guy we'll guess him at the end. Just say yeah. it again. Just say we'll guess you guys at the end. Uh, we'll guess whatever you that guys means. Or who's asking? I don't know. Who's Alex. Okay. Alex. I know Isaac Baker. Isaac Baker at the end. Of this. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, wait, guys. All right. We're gonna try to get this. Okay. So that's getting ready. Take that off the heat for a sec. Don't add too much butter. Out of here. Add your butter in and just whisk. Okay, we're gonna head back on the beat. Oh, one second. A little bit more butter. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, there we go. Back on the heat and just whisk. more butter. Back on the heat. Almost ready to We have 10 minutes left on the clock. And we're Say hi to James C. He gave you 50 likes. Sorry? Jamie C. gave you 50 likes. Jamie C. gave me 50 likes. Thank you so much for your support. So, sorry, uh, butter, a little bit more. This will be our, our Whoa, making noise, that's okay. This will be either the last or second last time we add our butter in. Back to the stove. Yep, this will be our last time we add our butter in. How do you know how much butter to add? You kind of have to guesstimate it unless you're doing a recipe. So if you guys are doing a recipe, follow that recipe. But for this, I'm just kind of winging it. I mean, say if the food is basically when you're like, making a biscuit. Just because you want to make sure that you uh, cook up the egg. So let me say egg yolks, butter. What's the recipe for that? Uh, the recipe for this is a... Oh, one second. This is not a recipe. This is... So the recipe for this is a... Reduction. So, flavor, uh, uh, shards and tarragon, and then, uh, oh my god. Okay, so this is egg yolk, uh, salt, uh, tar chopped tarragon, uh, and then a tarragon reduction, which is champagne vinegar, shallots, tarragon, and salt. Okay, in it goes. Eight Beautiful. Minutes, you have eight minutes, sir. Look at that. And I still got eight minutes left, guys. Somebody asking what kind of mittens are those? What kind of mittens are these? Turdiments. These are my, uh, these are the mittens when it gets really hot and cold. No, these are just my bad oven. I get burnt in these all the time. Right. So just kind of whisking that. 
just to kind of make sure it's cool. And you know what I'm gonna do? Just make sure it doesn't cool too much. Just dump it right in. Just let that, just hold it in there for a split second. Just how it kind of stops it, because we don't want it to curl while we're plating. That's a cool little trick there. And look at that. It's good to go. That is, in my opinion, a perfect Bernays sauce. What makes a perfect Bernays sauce? What makes a perfect Bernays sauce is to make sure that you do not make scrambled eggs. You always want to make sure that you're constantly, oh, sorry, you want to make sure that you're constantly whisking while you're cooking it. And that's, in my opinion, what makes perfect Bernays. All right, we're going to plate. But we're out of plates. Plate. No, go right there. Oh, no, that's dirty here. This is a clean one. I'm just going to wipe that down. It's still on. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it's fine. Just wiping that. All right, so if I remember the plating correctly... Don't do that. Get a spatula. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna go on first, and then I don't really know. Oh yeah, I think I. Yes, yes. Yeah, so a sauce on the bottom, and then oh, I remember now. All right, that was a little like brain laugh or something. Okay, so very precise here. Quiet moment of silence and duh. <laughs> a moment of stress or, or, or whatever they call it. Whatever they call it. Good. So just a little bit more. Nice little circular motion. Okay. Russell's gonna go right in. The masking is up, bro. Just repeat what those things Sorry? are. Sorry. Okay, this is a walnut or peak or yeah, walnut Brussels sauce. That is our salmon on croup, and then we have our Bernays sauce. Okay, last but not least, potatoes. Grab a big one. And done. Turn around. Okay, done with five minutes and forty seconds to spare. Look at the timer. Oh, it's low battery. It's okay, just press it. Pause. Well, that, that happened like 10 seconds ago. Well, turns out that I can do this dish with, like, turn that off. So, we finished the dish, like, right, like, it was really, really close on this showdown. But here, I somehow managed to finish it with five minutes to spare. And I was waiting around for, like, 10 minutes, too, so. And take questions. Yeah. Sorry? And take questions. And I took a lot of questions, too, so. And I explained how to cook it. So I think this is pretty darn good. I must have so. Take a look at that. Let's zoom in on this. Yeah, sure. For our Instagram post. All right. You guys give me one second. I'm going to take myself a picture because this is bomb. Take a bow. All right. Hopefully this is good enough for my Instagram. Boom. Instagram. I'm a flashy Boom. photographer. Okay, um, boom. Done. Alright, got my Instagram awesome picture. picture. What? Mom. Got my Instagram okay. picture. Yeah, alright, All right, now we're gonna taste this. Oh, well, flash it out. Yeah, cut it. What? Cut it open it once, I actually have a good night to go with. Okay. Oh my god, look at all these juices running out. Holy cow. That's absolutely perfectly cooked. Seriously, guys. Here's the bomb. Let's take a picture of that, please, before we cut it. Oh, I need to take a picture of that. Please. Thank you. One, one second, sorry. They don't want to have anything to post. I'm going to turn that around. Because seriously, that is the bomb. All right, we're good. I'll leave this beside me in case we need to. I'm gonna take a bite now. Perfectly nice and crispy, beautifully cooked. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna taste each element kind of on its own because I don't want to get too big of a bite. Okay, potatoes are 
really crispy. I have to taste it, Mom. Be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get much better than that. Okay, Brussels sprouts. Mm. Once again, I always forget I take such a big bite. I don't know why. <laughs> Me and my silly big bites. Okay. Take a bite into the salmon. I'm going to get a smaller one. And dig into that burning sauce. Guys, that is absolutely delicious. The Bernays has like this beautiful lemon quality to it, and it adds this beautiful fresh freshness from the tarragon. And then this guy is just like my best pal because he is delicious. All right, and there you guys have it. Um, this dish I made on Master Chef Celebrity Showdown, uh, but it was tag team style. But this time I did it on my own. Salmon on pro crispy potatoes, burning sauce, and Brussels sprouts. And I did that with five minutes and 41 seconds to spare. And I was waiting around a lot of time. So, no. Thank okay. you. Thank you. you want to try to guest him then? How do you do that? The guest is gone. Oh, okay. All right. Does anyone just ask if anyone wants to guest? Okay, questions and challenges. All right, now last, I actually just want to talk about for a second. Last week on my other Periscope, during my cooking challenge, Tim was like, hey, can you do the flambe trick? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it at the end of it. So now I'm for each Periscope or broadcast, I'm going to try to get you guys to do a challenge for me. So if you guys have any challenges that are reasonable and that I can do right now, please let me know. And I'll also be more than happy to take some questions. Can you repeat what's in the salmon? Okay, so for the salmon... So slice the salmon in half, and then you spread one layer with our pesto butter. And then on the other layer is a Dijon mustard. You sandwich them together, egg wash, and wrap them in puff pastry. Cook them in the oven, 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Okay, you got a challenge. Chop an onion in 30 seconds. A whole onion or a half onion? A whole onion or half an onion to Luke on you now. Just repeat the question, Luke, half an onion? Yeah, half, Luke, Luke now. Is, do, you want, do you want to do a half an onion or a whole onion? Half. Half, all right, that's doable, all right. Let's do this. I'm going to grab my soap. Okay, right, I'm going to move my dish over. And I'm going to be eating this, actually, at the end. That's my dinner. Yeah. All right, one sec, guys. I'm going to grab myself an onion. Crack five eggs in 25 seconds. Crack in 25 seconds, I could do that, but I need to be wasting so much. Alright, got my onion. And lastly, I'm just need to clean my knife. And timer, timer, timer. I'll start the timer myself. You want to time? Oh, no, I'll time door. Alright. Get, to, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Luke to time it. No, Luke, no, because there's a lot of okay. things. So All right. I'll do the timer. Cancel. Do you ever spill food on your toes? Do you ever spill food on your toes? Um, I got, I think I got a few oil burns on my feet when I was cooking in slippers. But that's about <laughs> it. Don't cook in slippers. Okay, so 30 seconds, he said? Yeah, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Oh, 30 seconds? Okay. Oh, I did it wrong. What? This thumb tangle. Sorry, guys, one sec. Somebody's asking, am I supposed to keep onions in the fridge? Are you supposed to keep onions in the fridge? I don't know. Some people don't. I keep them in the fridge, but if I run out of room, then I keep them outside. But I prefer to keep them in the Bugs fridge. in Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta keep them in the fridge in Florida because there's more bugs. Okay. 30 second timer. Where, where, where can I keep this? Um, you keep it right there on the floor. All right. You keep that right there so you guys can see. And sure, I'm gonna skin the onion already, right? Yeah. No, you shouldn't skin. You should do okay, it. Okay. I'll leave the skin on oh. there. Hey right, guys, when you're ready. On your mark, and you want it diced. I'm gonna do diced. Sure. Little... On Let's your start. mark, get set, go. Oh god, I'm wasting time doing this. This is an unfair challenge. I'm just kidding. Okay.
Eight seconds, seven. Boom, that was horribly chopped because of the dumb onion peeling, but that's all right. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. All right. Sorry about that. That was kind of horribly chopped just because I wasted 15 seconds trying to get that dumb onion peel out of the chance. But that's wow, okay. nice, says Luke from you now. Not too bad, but I, usually I cut them smaller. Put that away for later. All right, you guys got any more crazy questions for me? Who's questions? your biggest competition? Who is my biggest competition? What grade are you now? I'm actually in eighth grade. And who's my biggest competition? On the show, um, well, on the show, my biggest competition, um, I definitely think that was Kaya. She was a really, really good chef. And I think everyone, including me, was sad to see her go because she was really, really good, especially at her age was amazing. So she was definitely my biggest competition. You guys got any more challenges or questions? Uh, somebody said you are the competition. Just gotta say, you competition. are the competition. Yeah, that actually is a really, really good point. Because greatest enemy is yourself. So, do you play it. any sports besides tennis? You've got a question. You play any sports besides tennis? Tennis is kind of like my main thing that I want to do in life. And then after I retire, I want to do cooking. So, um, I play, sometimes I play some sports for fun, basketball, football, occasionally, but just with my family, so. Uh, when you, were you happy when, when, when you found out that mer- you made burgers? In the first in, challenge. In the first challenge. Uh, just got a question. Were you happy that you made box. burgers instead of the first mystery box episode one? Um, yeah, I was actually pretty happy. I mean, I make burgers a lot, so. I mean, what I made on the burger was like my all-time favorite things. The only thing that I would have changed, and that's actually what I did on my first Periscope broadcast, instead of panko crusted onion rings, I made tempura style onion rings, which are to die for. They're super crunchy and this really light batter. And the recipe for that is actually on my blog. And to get to that, you gotta check on my website, zach-car.com. On the top menu bar, it'll show a little blog. Click that and you should get to my blog. Who is your biggest competition in the top four? Got a question. Who is my biggest competition in the top four? Hmm. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure. I mean, everyone there was, was pretty good. So I, I, I don't know. I think it was pretty, it was an even playing field. What did you cook first and who inspired you to cook? It's the first thing you cooked. Yeah. Uh, just got a question. What was the first thing you cooked and who inspired you to cook? Uh, the first thing I cooked was, I started by making scrambled eggs with my mom, and then I made curry one time, and then burgers. So, and who inspired me to cook? I actually got inspired by the show, and then my mom sort of taught me the basics, and then she enrolled me into online culinary school as part of my schoolwork. Um, somebody on Periscope is saying, because my phone is too small, yeah. I can't see, forever friend? I don't understand the question. Yeah, if, just, if you have the question, just say it again. Yeah, from uh, Paris. I'll, I'll, I'll recite it. Could you guys repeat that question? The forever friend question. For forever you have friend. a dog. I have a dog? Do you have a dog? Do you have a dog? Um, I actually really want a dog. I'm like dying for one. I'd like, I'm itching for one, but I don't have one. Okay. Uh, did you meet any of the, uh, any of the, uh, contestants in the MasterChef showdown? Did you meet any of the contestants on MasterChef showdown? Um, I didn't meet any of the celebrities just because everything was going really, really fast. I mean, everything was like scrambling around. So it was a really fast pace. No, I did not meet any of the celebrities, but we did hung, hang out with Luca, Christine, and Claudia. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, do you go to regular school or special? Do the other students treat you different now? Uh, I just got a question. Do you go to a regular school or a special school, or do the other students treat you differently now? I actually go... They didn't mean special ed, just like spe- uh, other school. I'm actually homeschooled, so the only two classmates I have are my brother and sister, but they treat me the same. So. <laughs> how uh, was it meeting Claudia? Just got a question. How was it meeting Claudia? Uh, meeting Claudia was amazing. She's so nice. Um, she's, she's also so nice. an amazing cook. I mean... 
all the other, like Luca, super funny guy, he's awesome. And Christine, like I said, is absolutely inspirational. So she's absolutely, she's amazing. What is your favorite thing about cooking? Just got a question. What is your favorite thing about cooking? Probably that there's so many different things you can do that, you know, the one thing I love doing in Southern Kitchen is experimenting, even though it causes a gigantic mess. I still like doing it. I like doing different kind of flavor combinations. What works well sometimes stuff you've never done, like um, I made a chicken jus foam inside it, another one of my recipes, which no one had ever done before. And, you know, I just love experimenting in the kitchen. So that's probably the best thing. That's a periscope question. Uh, I missed it. Could you repeat that question on Periscope? We yeah. missed it. Yeah, I just missed a Periscope question. I don't know who from, so. <laughs> Did you have a crush on any of the other contestants? On MasterChef. Did you have a crush on any of the other contestants? To be honest, no. I don't, I don't really date anyone. It's kind of weird. Okay. Oh, would you ever have a meetup one day? Do from you, you now. Would you ever, got a question from you now. Would you ever have, uh, a meetup. A meetup. I actually met up with you. Corey. Yes. Where you meet fans. Oh, where you meet fans. Yeah, so we oh, arrange it. It's like a whole event. I don't, like I, a book I, signing I, or something. I don't really know. I'll have to arrange it. I don't know. We'll probably have to arrange and do a lot of stuff. So I don't know. I'll probably get back to you guys on that. If I am having a meetup, uh, I'll definitely be posting it on my Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. So I'll definitely check that out. Did you have a fire in the kitchen? Have you ever made a fire? Have you ever made a fire in the kitchen? Just got a question. Have you ever made a fire in the kitchen? Believe it or not, I actually haven't. So, yay, prop, pat on the back for me on that one. But I have gotten kind of like, have you been to Idaho? We've been to Idaho. Um, no, that's a very specific question, but no. Do the kids go on Master Chef, uh, cruise? Sean's on it. For the Master Chef cruise, uh, Sean is on it. Um, I don't really know. That's about it, I think. I don't really know yet. I wish I could go, but I don't, I, I don't know yet. Well, you guys gotta see. Alexander was on the first season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Alexander was on the first Master of Cruise, and they're doing another one. Sean's gonna be on it. Leslie, Claudia, uh, Luca, and Elizabeth. So, that's about it so far. If you could cook for somebody, who would it be? If I could cook for someone, who would it be? Probably Gordon, even though I already cooked for him, but every time just cooking for him is an absolute honor. I mean, he's Gordon Ramsay. He has like three Michelin stars. He's an amazing chef, amazing person. So even though I already cooked for him, I'd love to cook for him again. What do you like to do in your free time? Got a question. What do you like to do in your free time? Um, I love playing video games. Um, that's kind of like one of my favorite things to do. Watch TV. Man, that sounds really lazy, but I actually like to do go swimming, mini golf, bowling. We, we do that occasionally. So that's kind of like what I like to do. In my have you been to Georgia and have you been to Chicago? Got a question. Have you been to Georgia and have you been to Chicago? Two questions. Um, no, I actually haven't. I mean, I really want to go to all these places, but I just haven't. What's your favorite video game? What's your favorite video game? Um, I really like all the sports video games, I think. Those are probably my favorite ones. For a while, like when I was a little kid, like the thing was Wii. I mean, that was like the main, that was like the really kind of cool thing. Like if you had a Wii, then you'd be considered cool basically. So I love the Wii. I still play it occasionally, but I'm into kind of like PlayStation or Xbox now. Do you watch Hell's Kitchen? Got a question. Do you love Hell's Kitchen? Do you watch? Do you watch Hell's Kitchen? I actually don't. I don't even know if it's, um, I don't. No, I don't really watch this. It's probably past my bedtime too, so. What's your favorite food? It's actually past my bedtime now, but that's okay. What's what time do you sleep at? What time do you sleep at? Um, I sleep at 8.30 to 9. Um, I try to go to bed at 8, but I mostly end up, cause by the time I have my snack, some, like, all that stuff, it's probably like 8.30, so I try to go to bed at, at 8, but it always ends up being 8.30 to 9, so, whatever. <laughs> Did you send a video for your audition for Master of Junior or go to an open call? Just got a question. Do you send, did you send your video to Master of Junior or did you go to an open call? I actually flew up to Phoenix and did an open call there. And so that's kind of how I got on the show. Where do you live? Uh, I oh. live in, uh, what? Oh, I live in Orlando, Florida. So home state. 
It's just, man, we've got a lot of questions today. I'm so happy. Somebody wants to meet up with Wonderworks. Someone wants to meet up with Wonderworks? Don't really know. What's your favorite food? Got a question. What's your favorite food? Favorite food is steak or any kind of beef preparation except for steak tartare. I hate everything that's raw. So definitely a steak or a burger. Have you always lived in Orlando? Got a question. Have you always lived in Orlando? Uh, no, I was actually born in Canada, and then I lived there, and then I moved here when I was about seven or eight. But you know what? I'm a complete Floridian, I think that's what they call it. But I love Florida. I mean, I call it home. I mean, it feels like home, and I absolutely love it here. Have you been to Disney World? Have you been to Disney World? Hell yeah, I've been to Disney World. I mean, I've only, I've only been there once in the past couple of years. So universal. I haven't actually gone to the parks in a while because I've been kind of busy with everything. Hint, hint. Hint, <laughs> hint, hint. But that's okay. Do you watch sports? Got a question. Do you watch sports? I mean, who doesn't watch sports? I mean, I actually was just watching a football game the other day. The Seahawks versus the... Uh, Carolina. Yeah. Seahawks and Carolina. And I watch tennis. Mainly just occasionally football and tennis. Do you like living in Florida? Got a question. Do you like living in Florida? I mean, beautiful weather. Um, everyone's super nice. Um, I love living in Florida. Even though it's been kind of really, really cold these last few days, but that's okay. Oh, well. When you follow somebody on Instagram, do you go through their pictures? When you follow someone on Instagram, do you go through your pictures? Just got a question. Yes, I actually do. Usually when I follow someone, I try to like their photos and maybe write a comment. You know, Rivers follows me. I really try just to, I'm really making an effort to read all your guys' messages, all the fan, fan mail, or if someone tags me in a photo. So like I said, I'm really trying to read all the messages you, that you guys give me. And you know what? You, can, you guys can actually check out my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I got some amazing stuff. Super Bowl pick. Super Bowl pick. Um, I think the Patriots are in it still, or they lost? No, in it still. Oh, I'm rooting for the Patriots then, who are my favorite team. I was rooting for Green Bay, but then they lost, so. Do you choose a future job as a chef or anyone else? Do you choose, uh, what do we mean by that? Like, do you want Wait, to be what, a chef? you want your job as a chef or yeah. something Oh, else? do you want your job to be as a chef or something else? Well, when I grow up, I want to be um, a tennis player, but then after I retire, I want to go into the food industry because I really love doing it. So that's probably what I want to do. How's the weather in Florida? By the way, I'm a triplet. How's the weather in Florida? Um, it's been super, 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 super cold for me, even though it's probably not even that cold to other people where it snows, but here it feels freezing. Favorite cheese? My favorite cheese for a while was mozzarella, and then it evolved to, to cheddar, and now it has evolved to Gruyere cheese just because of a cheese sauce. Any other questions? I think that's it. All right, guys. I think this has been a really long Paris, uh, broadcast. So I think I'm going to wrap it for this one. I mean, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, I made the Celebrity Showdown dish. I did an onion challenge, thanks to Luke. And um, favorite dish had, ever. Favorite, do you have a question? Favorite dish ever. Probably a hamburger or a nice steak. So. Like I said, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's getting kind of late. I got to go to bed. I mean, I got to clean up with the family. I still got to eat that yummy dish. I mean, I got a lot of stuff to do. So I'm going to wrap this one. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on Periscope, you now, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I think, can, oh. you, can you tell them what you're doing next? For uh, the uh, Stephen Kate for camp? Fishing. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to be doing a few things. I'm going to be doing a... Oh, theme. hold on. Better ask. Somebody wants to know if you know where Michigan is. Shasta twice. Someone wants to know where... Uh, if you know where Michigan is. Yeah, I'm going to know where Michigan is. <laughs> All right. So you want to wrap it up then? All right. Yeah, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook. What are you doing? Oh, first? I keep doing this. It's like... Ugh. Okay. So basically until the next few months, I'm going to be doing an Iron Chef Challenge with the Florida Fishing Radio. 
I'm also going to be a consultant for the culinary, you know, for the menu, for the Stephen Cates camp. Um, I'm going to be on a YouTube series by She Scouts. So guys, definitely go and check that out once it comes out. And I think that's about it. Yeah. So once again, this is the last time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you now and YouTube. Thanks again, guys. You need a sign off line. Sign off. Sign off line. Um, Make it up. Mm, that's all right. Let me think. You should dance your way off. No, I'm not going to dance my way off. I'm a horrible dancer. No, I'm a horrible dancer. How about bye? Bye. That's just how I'm going to Peace out. Yeah, peace out, peeps. <laughs> well done.